I, I'll introduce myself again, my background and uh, my publish, my books that I've published and uh, my course offerings. These are uh, books that I've written in the past few years, and this is my most recent one on quiet, quiet woodworking. And uh, this talks mostly about the, uh, the transition to hand tools and the advantages of uh, hand tool woodworking compared to uh, full-on machinery and power tools. Of course, there is a intermediate hybrid stage. And this is my journey from my former high tech career of 30 years to my uh, woodworking furniture making career of 30 years. Now, if you add that up, it doesn't make sense. I must be about 90 years old or something, but it is a little just put considerable overlap. I, I did work, uh, woodworking part time for a number of years and then only in the last 14 years that have 13 years that I've been doing it full time. This is a starting a woodworking business book. It's pretty good. It's been revised, by the way. And this is uh, when I delved into uh, wood art. This is a uh, wood artist. It's all about um, moving away from uh, furniture and more into organic uh, sculptural work and uh, and inlay and uh, working with micro photography on uh, on dyed woods. It's a very interesting book, actually. And this is a, a whole book on uh, on a progression of uh, of a design. To a piece of furniture so this covers uh very good photography on uh, all the steps and techniques i use from my design stage the formative stage and then uh what i what i the criteria i use to design furniture right through to the making of the furniture so these books are available at my uh, woodskills.com website so these are available along with uh I have several woodworking courses from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design course and right through to a, a design and making course that, it, that you actually get the book with the, uh, with the course. You bear with me, I'm just uh, setting up. I'll show you. Hopefully it works fine. So this slides back and forth. I'll put this, put this away. And I'll use a, uh, a modern plow plane. This is a Veritas. It's a Veritas called, it's called a small plow plane. I use this a lot for uh, for creating uh, drawer grooves. And uh, so let's assume this is a side of a, a drawer. Like here. This is the side and I need to create a groove along the bottom so I can slide a, a drawer bottom in. Uh, and this is actually uh, almost the size of uh, the, the type of drawer I create for my small piece of furniture. So I offset the predetermined amount that I've set here. It's actually quite a bit wider, so what I'll do is I'll bring it in. And lock it in. These are arms, so you can lock it in. And then uh, the depth uh, is important because you can, you can work with the, the depth adjustment and keep it uh, keep the grooves at a certain depth. And the uh, how the angle protrudes from the skate. There's another adjustment and it locks in, so let's just try it. I have a dedicated setup for this kind of thing. So. So you can see the beginning of it. This is a 3 16 blade. And uh, maybe I'll just need more offset. Again, it's just a test piece, so. I normally have it between 3 16 and quarter inch from the bottom. This was a little closer, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this setup isn't optimal for using plow planes. So, like I said, I use uh, normally use my other tail vice configuration at the other workbench. But you get the idea. This uh, 
I don't have one. Oh, you do have one made. This is a, uh, a drawer bottom a groove, and this so this would lock in. This would uh, this would lock in and create the uh, the drawer bottom. So it's a beautiful thing to use. It's very light, and it uh, it's almost uh, dedicated in my case to drawer bottoms groups. So I use that considerably. And it's, uh, so these, uh, these are the components of a drawer. This is the, uh, the face or the front, the drawer front. This is, uh, for example, a side. And this would lock in once I created the dovetails. So they both have the same groove. Now, in this case, uh, on the drawer front, it's a stop groove. But if you align it, if you set it up correctly, you can actually work within a dovetail, the half point dovetail. I don't know if we have enough time to get in the half point dovetails. So that, that was the Veritas version of the plow plane. Now I've got, I've got uh, several uh, vintage uh, plow planes that I mentioned yesterday, and they're all set up. Uh, this one's set up a 316 siren, and the offset's a little uh, large. But this also does uh, very similar work, and it works just as well as a metal one almost. I mean, it's a wood, wood body, wood fence, and the concept's the same. The functionality is the same. There isn't much uh, technologically that's changed over the... Uh, over the years with this. It's just lighter and made of metal, the current one. And so I've got three that are set up differently. I think that's my only metal bodied uh, wall plane. I do have a, a skew rabbit plane. I have, uh, well, since we're, uh, we're discussing hand planes, might as well talk about this. This is, uh, a lot of people are familiar with this, but it's a Stanley 45. I purchased it in good condition, but I've done a little bit of restoration cleaning, cleaning of it. So this actually was my go-to plane for uh, for creating grooves until I, I purchased the Veritas one. But you can see it's set for uh, for for very short grooves, and it has a micro adjust on the fence, so that works. Uh, so it locks in, locks in, and then I. Uh, So this is the, the course adjustment. I'll just show you the adjustment. So I'm adjusting the fence. I'm eyeballing the offset. I lock in the, uh, the main fence. And I have this, uh, this micro adjust that I can dial in the uh, micro adjust the, uh, the offset, which this is a later addition, a later development in the, in the, uh, in the history, the development of the Stanley 45. So I've actually upgraded this to, uh, to this model. And then uh, once that's done, it's locked. And so it creates, uh, very good at creating grooves, this one, and you can, it's very versatile. You can, uh, use a depth adjuster. You can, you can also replace the iron with, um, with profiles, irons. And create profiles. If you can get a hold of this, it's actually a good plane. Now uh, they're set up for uh, this one's set up for right-handed use, but I can easily reverse everything. If I'm not mistaken, I set it up for left-handed use. The one thing I didn't mention yesterday was uh, one of the advantages of uh, of. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, going back to workbenches, this is an interesting uh, accessory you might be you might want to uh, purchase. This uh, prevents racking. So if I'm uh, if I'm clamping something down at this end of the uh, on the right hand side of the uh, on the face place, it's, it creates a racking, and this this part so to prevent that and uh, have have the opening parallel. I would use this. So I quickly determine the, uh, the thickness and just draw it out there, and then tighten it down. But that keeps uh, that creates a parallel. And this is it swings away, so you can swing it over, so it's not too, uh, it's not in the way or anything. So I tend to use this a lot. You can uh, there are different versions of this. You can even make your own. I think I made my own at one point, but then I just purchased one. It wasn't fairly expensive, and uh, I use it a lot for prevent racking. One of the uh, advantages to hand tool work with woodworking that I didn't even mention yesterday was the fact that you avoid sanding. Now, if you notice when I was preparing that. Uh, that plank and dressing both sides and the edge. There was hardly any sanding, no sanding at all. 
So that uh, that allows me to create wood uh, wood shavings instead of uh, instead of a fine dust, airborne dust. And these days, it's uh, it's become more and more critical to avoid uh, breathing in airborne dust. So that's a huge advantage of hand tools over any machines. But then again, having said that, you need uh, considerable dust extraction when you're using machines, especially sanding machines, a bandsaw and uh, all the other powered machines. So you need to, if you're purchasing machines, you need to invest in all the dust, call it dust collection or dust extraction. But if you are uh, using hand tools, you don't have to concern yourself with any of that because you're not sanding, you're not shaving, you're not uh, tearing any wood away from the wood. You're, it's all, it's all about shavings. You can see here. So, well, the only thing I really have on my, on my floor at this, uh, in this upper level of my workshop is at any given time it's shaving. So I just sweep and there's very, very little dust. I mean, I dust this place maybe every few months. It's just hardly any dust, but it's mostly on the, on the floor. Whereas in my previous workshops, when I did more commercial production work, it was a considerable amount of dust. I hardly used hand tools. It was all machine work with uh, even the dust collection wasn't that great at the time. So what I'd like to talk about next is uh, a couple of uh, accessories you should become familiar with. One is a, is a bench hook. I, uh, I touched on this yesterday and I mentioned I'd be using it today. Now this is a this is a bench hook and I use I have about three or four of these now. One at every bench and a couple of extra on my earlier workbenches, so a total of four maybe. And I use this extensively in my work. What this allows me to do is cross cut pieces to length. And if you set it up with a, with a stop block, you can actually create uniform size pieces. And what it does is it creates pieces, but very with very fine uh, finish at the end. So you almost need hardly any finishing, maybe run it through a shooting board afterwards, which I'll, I'll show you. So you can set up, uh, it's, it's a base with a fence and the fence has openings and it curves at uh, predetermined angles of uh, 90 degrees or 45 degrees. And then if you flip it over, uh, the reason there's two fences, one actually isn't a fence, one, they're both fences, but one serves as a, as a cleat to hold it against the uh, surface of the workbench. Uh, what this allows me to do is, uh, is use the uh, bench hook to uh, to cross cut pieces of wood to length. Now, one of the issues with uh, and because you can flip it over and set this side up with different angles, so you have 90, 45, but you can easily set it up for 30, 30 degrees or 60 degrees, whatever angles convenient. And because they're so easy to make and quick to make, uh, you can have multiples of these. This is a, a unique version that I created uh, for an article in, uh, in uh, woodworking, uh, sorry, in a magazine uh, a couple of years ago, and it has uh, openings for dogs. And the reason I love that is because if you, if you use a, uh, a bench hook against, uh, against the, on the surface of a, a workbench, like I'm doing here, it's hard to keep it from rocking. Really have to do multiple things, hold the wood and uh, against the fence and hold the fence and, so to eliminate notice the crossing, this is the, uh, the piece I've just cut off, and it's very clean. You can just actually a shine on the surface. And again, this is a very, very fine back saw that I tend to use with this. And you can see the kerf is, uh, is a 32nd inch wide or something. And because it's a back saw, you're limited in the depth. Now this back saw, these uh, fence heights are uh, work, are designed around this particular saw, and you can see the back saw, the, uh, the folded uh, back hits the, or doesn't actually hit the bottom. So that's important if you're determining the height of the fence. You want to work uh, work with uh, with the, the tool or the saw you're going to use the most at that bench hook. You can always have a shorter fence, but I prefer taller fences, and I think this one's a little bit shorter. So these, uh, these last a long time, if you're careful with them, and what I've done here is I put a, a hardwood face, and glued a hardwood uh, face on the, on the front. Now, going back to this design, what the dog holes do, 
is allow me to uh, lock it into place using a, a wooden dog. So this again, it's all customized for your workbench, and that's that's the idea. So this keeps it from rocking, and that's my design as far as I, as far as I know. And uh, if you flip it over, you get the same. So that prevents it from rocking. So if I'm cross cutting a piece, okay, and I do offer plants for this in my, uh, they're included in my woodworking course at woodskills.com and uh, a couple of other in that book, the design and making book. So if, I, if I'm cutting this, uh, cross cutting this, I'll do it again. I didn't have to worry about holding the bench hook. I could just focus on keeping this little component, wood component against the fence. So if I'm cross-cutting a uh, 45 degree angle, similar. Try not to cut my fingers here. <laughs> I think it's already a bit of a handful to hold a piece against the fence. Well, that's a 45. That's another piece of cut. So that's probably very accurate. We measure this. Uh, I use this to determine angles pretty often. So it's, it's right, it's bang on, it's 45 degrees. So I use this uh, quite a bit because I'm, I do a lot of uh, small drawers and small compartments at 45 degrees on both the case side and the face side. So, so that's... Uh, that's how a bench hook works. Now this is, uh, again, that's the one I've designed with that. Another one of my bench hooks. And this works with, uh, again, the same concept, but it doesn't have the holes. And the fences are lower, so the reason I made this fence lower is to use a different saw for this side and uh, on the cleat side. And then, and I forget if that's the saw you use there. You can see this kerf is, is becoming a little worn. So um, this was my go-to bench hook for a long time until I progressed to this one. This, yeah, this works with this too. So let's just. Notice uh, you know, to keep it against the, uh, the king that swung back. Again, that's the concept. So you can either have a uh, uh, closed, you can either cut within a closed kerf or keep it open, keep it, keep the kerf, keep the kerf uh, open and cut against the, uh, the end. This see allows you more versatility for doing it against the end. It's a little bit quicker too. We could do both and again, set it up for angle work. So I would, uh, if you're going to get an investor, work with handles. I can't, I can't uh, recommend this highly enough. This is something you really need. So I have even smaller versions of these that work with uh, really small components. I use, again, I use this a lot. And I'll show you my next uh, 